that's the type of um, arrogance that we see from these uh, these liberals who are, to me, are the most racist uh, when it comes to their points of view. Now, the question that uh, we ought to be asking ourselves is how have we gone from having 25% of black kids entering the world without a father married to the mother in 1965, when clearly racism was worse, uh, to 70% today in 2022? Right. Uh, and I've always argued, Pastor, that it's the welfare state. Uh, not that people don't need help, not that people uh, don't, don't get into trouble and need money, but I've always felt that individuals should do it, churches should do it, not government should do it, because government creates dependency. And I've always said, don't know whether or not you agree, but the welfare state has induced women to marry the government and allowed men to abandon their financial and moral responsibility. What's your reaction to that? You know, absolutely. I agree 100 percent that post-liberal uh, liberalism of the 60s has gotten our, our culture, our community in a lot of trouble. Uh, those policies that they have established have caused us to be totally dependent on government and it's totally moved fathers out of the household, causing 80 percent of or upward in our neighborhood, single parent mothers who having to re rely on a government system that cannot love them back, that cannot lead them, nor give them the affirmation and attention that they even need. But we're married to that system because they've created such a dependency that it makes uh, young women uh, in our community feel as if they cannot succeed or cannot make it without the help of their government. And as a result, a lot of men have been have abandoned their homes because they cannot even be in the home. And that's one of the reasons why I believe we see so much violence in the city of Chicago and these other urban centers across America, because we have a bunch of young boys who have fatherless homes and a bunch of young boys who are really led by single parent mothers who have a, a great dependency on government. You know, Pastor, uh, some of your fellow members of the clergy don't seem to be emphasizing this. Let's just take three of them, Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, uh, and Louis Farrakhan. Al Sharpton led, led a very nice middle class life until his father abandoned the family and then down to the ghetto he went. Jesse Jackson's mother was a teenager who got pregnant by the married man who lived next door. And when Jesse Jackson was raised in South Carolina, that was an unusual uh, phenomenon, not to have a father in the home. And he was teased. Jesse ain't got no daddy. Jesse ain't got no daddy. In the case of Farrakhan, Farrakhan's mother was estranged from her husband, had a boyfriend, briefly took back up with the husband, got pregnant with who turned out to be Louis Farrakhan, and tried to abort him with the coat hanger. Yet all three of these men of the cloth are always talking about systemic racism, the white man this, the white man that, rather than the central issue, which is lack of fathers in the home. And they could speak to it from personal information, from personal experience, as you are, but they're not. Right. Yeah, you know, it's like Booker T. Washington said, there are individuals who consistently, in my own words, uh, make money off our pain, or their, their grievances are so uh, totally kept before the American public because that's how they make a living. And it's unfortunate that individuals who have been in that type of predicament, they ought to know the difference and they ought to know what uh, fatherless homes is all about. And they ought to know how difficult it is for single parents to raise these boys. But you're right. These are leaders that we have and we've been dependent upon for far too long to uh, to lead us and, and give messages, but those that leadership and those messages are totally uh, in direct conflict to what we really need to be hearing. What does our current out of control inflation look like? Well, it looks like paying 47% more for fuel than a year ago. It looks like paying 41% more for the same used vehicle if you buy it this year instead of last. It looks like paying almost 10% more to feed your family. It looks like every dollar in your savings is worth less than it was a year ago. Hedge against the US dollar by investing in something with real value, gold and silver from Birch Gold. Precious metals have historically been a safe haven in times of inflation, and Birch Gold is the leader in converting IRAs and 401ks into a tax-sheltered IRA backed by silver and gold. With thousands of satisfied customers and an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, Birch Gold can help you protect your savings. Just go to birchgold.com slash Larry now to get a no cost, no obligation info kit. This comprehensive 20 page guide reveals how gold and silver can protect your savings and how you can buy them under the umbrella of a tax sheltered account. So do it right now. Go to birchgold.com, 
slash Larry. That's B-I-R-C-H-Gold.com slash Larry. Yeah, and let's not let off the, uh, the white leaders. You've got people like uh, Joe Biden telling Charlemagne the God, quote, you ain't really black uh, if you don't know whether or not you want to vote for me or Trump. And you got Biden uh, during the 2012 race uh, talking about Mitt Romney before a black audience. And he said uh, because Romney did not want to regulate Wall Street, uh, what Mitt Romney wants to do is unchain Wall Street, want to put y'all back in chains. You know, we have a, an expression called white savior movies where uh, just people like Sean Connery in a movie called Finding Forrest uh, is uh, saving a, a black kid. Uh, the movie Blind Side, where Sandra, Sandra Bullock mentors a black uh, young man and saves him. Uh, and it's a disparaging term that many black movie critics use called white savior movies. But white savior politicians who basically tell you you're a victim, uh, you're being oppressed by the man, you're being oppressed by, by police officers, uh, they seem to get a pass. Absolutely. Not only do they get a pass, but as if it's OK to tell uh, us that it, we're not able to freely think or freely choose. To me, that's so anti-American. And, and I don't know what else to call it, because anytime you tell me as an American citizen that I don't have the freedom to choose to believe in another party or vote another way, that to me is in total conflict of what we believe in as Americans. So you have individuals like Biden who for years, along with his party, have told black men and black women that you you must vote for us. And if you think any other way, you're an Uncle Tom or you, you're you you're, you're stepping fetch. And that all of these coon names, all of these derogatory names, simply because we're free thinkers, we choose to vote how we want to vote. We choose to believe how we want to believe, and we refuse to allow anyone uh, to bind us and limit us by putting these labels on us. You know, and when Biden made that comment to Charlemagne the God, uh, I played it many times on my radio show. Charlemagne wasn't even insulted. And how about Chelsea Handler, the comedian who used to date 50 Cent? And when 50 Cent came out and supported Donald Trump, she said, I had to remind him that he's black. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Yeah, that's the type of that's the type of um, arrogance that we see from these uh, these liberals who are to me are the most racist uh, when it comes to their points of view. They continue to try to demean us by making us think that we have to think a certain way and they continue to put these chains on us by making us stay uh, in certain patterns of thinking. But I, I'm uh, following the type of mindset like you, Larry, I, I'm a free man, I'm a free thinker, and I'm not going to let anybody continue to put those limits on me and those labels. There is the uh, Black Lives Matter leader in New York. His name is Hawk Newsom. And recently he said, poverty causes crime. And I discussed that in my first book that came out about uh, 20 years ago called The 10 Things You Can't Say in America. And I pointed out that here in California, where I am, the 1960s, the area that had the greatest level of poverty, the highest level of unemployment, highest level of people earning less than $4,000 a year, the, the least level of educational attainment, highest level of tuberculosis was an area right outside San Francisco called Chinatown. Yet in the entire penal system of the whole state of California, Pastor, there are only five people of Chinese ancestry behind bars. So if poverty caused crime, it should have been full of Chinese and Chinese Americans, but it wasn't. Right. Right. You know, I, people make statements that don't hold water, and that's one of them. We both know uh, from our backgrounds that we've seen poverty at its lowest, and we've seen individuals... Uh, strive for better and not get committed to a life of crime, even though they were in poverty. We come from poverty stricken backgrounds. Poverty is not the absolute reason that causes these crimes. You have morality issues where people have taken God completely out. Right. And uh, God is, uh, and because of that, there's a lot of rampant, unhardest wickedness because people just don't have a relationship with God. And then you tie into the fact that there's so much fatherlessness. Individuals don't have fathers in the home. There's no two parent households. And you said the statistics earlier about how more likely these individuals are to commit crime. 
And and so adding poverty to the equation, it adds to the equation, but it is not the reason for what we're experiencing in our neighborhoods today, nor is racism the reason that we're experiencing what we're experiencing today. There are a lot of people who want to believe that white supremacy is the reason for the state of the crime in our neighborhood and the murders in our neighborhood and the, uh, the criminality that we see across the country. But that is so far from the truth. Well, that's all for today's Larry Elder on YouTube. We're now showing a shorter version of our show on YouTube. That's after being censored and demonetized for a whole year. Full episode can be watched on our website, epictv.com slash Larry Elder. That's epictv.com slash Larry Elder. You can also find out where to watch our show live on cable in your city at ntd.com slash TV. All the links are in the description down below.